Hey, welcome to Northwest. We are here in the bait lab for this week's how to. We're going to talk a little bit of plug pulling for steelhead. I want to remind everybody that our bait lab segments are presented by Max Lure. Max Lure jumped on board with us. We advocate that you uh, check out what they have going on either online or in your local stores. They produce a lot of good stuff, and as we roll into spring, get into a lot of that kokanee and trout fish, and Max Lure pay, plays an important role in what we do. Okay, um, plug fishing for steelhead, pulling plugs, man. It is something that if you haven't done it, once you do it, you'll understand what you've been missing. It is a great alternative to fishing some type of an artificial out in front of big aggressive steelhead that flat out gets it done. Let's talk a little bit about rod and reel uh, combination, how you get set up. Most of your plug rods you find, uh, manufacturers are pretty consistent, different variables in what they make or build the rods actually out of, but you wanna look for something in that seven and a half, I like a seven, seven and a half, one piece uh, plug rod. It should uh, indicate on the uh, on the brand or the type of rod it is that it is for plug fishing for salmon or steelhead. Now, most of your steelhead rods, really nice to have it in the range of that six to 15 pounds, seven and a half foot, one piece. We'll get it done all day long. If you predominantly are fishing later in the season, want a little something beefier, you'll find those rods in that eight to 20. But uh, I can assure you, these nice little six to 15 pound rods get it done uh, time and time again. I like to utilize reels with some type of line counter, whether it's digital or the old mechanicals work great because they don't need batteries to re be replaced. So that is a, that is a bonus. Um, line counters are important because as you put out your plugs, either at the, out the back of your uh, um, sled as you're backing down river, or out the front of your drift boat as you're slowly moving down river, you want to build that wall of resistance, whether it's two or three rods out the front or back of your boat, and you're running those plugs basically in the same distance or at an angle to kind of push those fish back against a wall or into a corner, or basically you're just trying to build that front that's going to move them down river as you start backing them up. If it's not going to strike early, Chances are as you get them back to the tail end of that run, down in that tail out section or back into a corner, they're going to have to do the old, uh, decide whether they're going to fight or flight. And uh, typically you're going to, you know, make them mad enough that they're actually going to attack that plug. So line counters are important to make sure distance from uh, your boat is equal. And I like depending on water clarity and depth is how far I'll put those plugs out. Sometimes summer run fishing, gin clear, low water, uh, and try not to push the fish out of there with the boat before the plugs get there. You know, I'll put them buggers out 45, 50 feet. Not afraid to do that at all. Now, some folks don't like to use braided line for plug pulling. Uh, they think that it, uh, you know, has too much buoyancy and it doesn't allow your plugs to dig down as deep as they should go. To be honest, when it comes to steelhead fishing, most of the time you're fishing four, six, eight, maybe 10 foot depth of water. Uh, getting your plugs down to that depth into their face is not a problem. I use braid because it's so thin in diameter, it has a lot less drag than your monofilaments of heavier uh, strength. So 40 or 50 pound braid on your level wine rim, do a real nice job. Put on a top shot, six to eight feet of monofilament, uh, cinch knotted to your uh, braid. Don't use a swivel, just tie it direct so you got that nice top shot. As we get into this time of year and start chasing those bigger uh, wild fish, 20, 25 pound top shot, nothing wrong with 25 pound, ultra green, durable, uh, abrasion resistant. Gonna back those plugs right into around that structure on some of those coastal streams. Gonna give you the advantage of trying to put some pressure to those fish to get them out of there. Uh, so don't go light on your top shot. Make sure it's good and girthy. And then just put a snap uh, dual lock or something on the end of that so you can swap out plugs on a frequent basis. So. Lots of different plugs to choose from when you're fishing for steelhead. There's a lot of tried and true favorites on here, and it kind of progresses for me. Back in the day, the, uh, the Hot Shots 30s and the old 35s, the bigger plug with that nice big bill on there, digs really well in the water, gets down, rattles a lot. Uh, lots of erratic action on these 35s. Um, the blue and green pirates for years in uh, you know three to six feet of visibility or gin clear. These things work fantastic. They've been tried and true. The smaller size 30s, any of these colors with these kind of metallics and multicolors or those dark bills. Contrast, these uh, little hot shots just have a great action to them that really stimulate the steelhead to bite. So you can't go wrong there. Um, moving over here, the Tad Poly. So the Tad Poly 
is one that's been around for a long time, but they actually uh, don't make it uh, anymore. You will find them online. You can find uh, some, some, some online stores that may carry them. You'll find that um, they come in a variety of colors. Uh, the, uh, the metallics work well. The multicolors work well. Some of these have been doctored up with darker bills, and um, that contrast, again, works very well. The other thing about, uh, the other thing about uh, Tad Polys is that they're castable, okay? Um, these, these little plugs actually, when you want to cast and retrieve for steelhead, believe it or not, it does work. The Tad Polys work very well for that. They don't catch a lot of wind and they got that heavier butt on them that allows them to get out away from you and actually cast pretty far. So something to think about if you have water that's conducive to cast and retrieve, it does work and it's a great way to ambush fish. Tad Polys been around a long time. Most cases I like to swap out the hook to a single side wash off the back, uh, put onto a, um, a uh, lock ring and also a barrel swivel is going to keep it uh, keep it uh, with better hook penetration and not come out sometimes as your treble would uh, twist out. Moving over here, I got the K9 Extreme. Okay, the K9 Extreme, um, let me see here. Nope, that's my Tad Poly. I got the K9 Extreme and uh, also the uh, U20 Flatfish, uh, Warden's U20 Flatfish by YBC. Um, multiple colors here. Fantastic plug to use. Again, I like to swap out the trebles to these uh, single side wash. Typically, I'll put two hooks on those. They seem to perform pretty well. It's basically a two-aught side wash onto a barrel swivel. And again, with the, um, with the swivels on your hooks and those fish start spinning and rolling around, you're not so apt to pull them trebles out of there uh, when you have that single side wash in there. They get good hook penetration. These plugs perform very well, uh, even with the dual hooks on them. Now, the one thing about all these plugs that I've talked about, they have a range in which they like to operate. Uh, they have a minimal amount of flow that they still perform pretty well, and they have a maximum amount of flow that if you exceed that, they tend to come up to surface and flip over and won't stay running true. So they have uh, what I refer to as a little bit narrower of a range of water that they are uh, performing well in, okay? Now let's get to what I consider to be uh, more of my favorite and that would be the, uh, the mag lips from YBC. Uh, lots of different colors to choose from on your mag lips, okay? Um, the thing about them is, you know, the 3.5 uh, and the 3.0 are fantastic for steelhead. They come in a wide range of colors. The best thing about these plugs, if you are new to plug fishing, haven't spent a lot of time pulling plugs out of your drift boat uh, and or uh, even out of the back of your sled, is that they are so forgiving in the types of waters that they will run. As I mentioned before, these plugs all work great, and they've been around a long time, uh, but they have certain parameters they like to run in. This Meglip will run in extremely slow water, and it will run into some of the fastest water that you're willing to row. If the Meglip's not staying down in the line that you're trying to pull, chances are you're probably fishing too fast to water. So that's a great gauge to tell you that, uh, you know, maybe I am putting these in too fast to water if the maglip won't even run. Also, if you're rowing in water trying to back down slow and you're having a heck of a time trying to keep the boat moving at a slower pace, you're definitely in too fast to water. So for a starter kit, even though it's been a phenomenal plug, proven, been around for a while now in, in a versatile of colors, uh, you put a maglip on right out of the box, there's no tuning necessary, you clip that thing on, it's gonna perform. I do like to switch out the treble hooks. They come with dual treble hooks. I'll run a single two watt uh, or three out off the back, depending on if it's a 3.5 or a 3.0. Um, I put that again on a lock ring with a uh, barrel swivel, and I have landed a ton of fish on mag lips with a single two odd hood out, hook out the back. Uh, gets it done. The fish can grab a hold of it. Good hook penetration on the takedown. It it turns in the mouth of the fish because it does have the swivel on there. Typically buries in really well and stays hold even on barbless hooks. Now let's talk about color progression. Up here I got a lot of the brighter colors, okay? Um, some of these uh, bright, vibrant colors uh, with UVs and whatnot are ideal and what I go to for dirty water. Coming off this high water in the next few weeks, we're going to have some limited visibility and we want to have these bright colors to really grab their attention. 
Also, these things make a little noise. They do rattle, and uh, they have attractability with color. They have attractability with erratic action. They have attractability with noise. And in high, dirty water or off-color water, as we get rivers to drop, I'm going with the fluorescence, okay? That's my first choice. As we get to water that starts to get into that three to six feet of visibility, nice green to it, that steely green as we call it, I start fishing some more of the metallics, uh, even with this herringbone or these tiger stripes in there. And all of these metallics in that three to six foot of water visibility work fantastic. Even like this herringbone with that, you know, that blue bill and this, uh, this nice chartreuse tail end on it, got the chrome on there. All of these grab light, all of these reflect light. Again, it's a maglev, the erratic action, the color contrast is ideal um, for some of these. They just flat get it done in that three to six feet, feet of visibility. Now, when we get to really clear low conditions, we might get there this year, although the winter has been so warm, we haven't had a lot of those cold temps that really drop our water down once we get past all this rain. To get those low gin clear conditions or similar to summer run fishing, that's when I go to the full on metallics, okay? Light refraction is really good with these types of colors, your golds and your greens. Don't discount the opportunity to also fish the 3.0s in this, in this Dr. Death color scheme here. Metallic, uh, good light refraction, got that dark bill. Again, we got color contrast. And we have a smaller presentation when the water gets really low and clear. So that 3.0 is an ideal size plug to be running for steelhead, even for big wild fish. Uh, as we get later in season, you get those clear conditions. So you have a lot of options. The mag lip gets it done for me time and time again because it's such a versatile plug. And again, it runs in all those different conditions. You can have uh, real soft water on the right side of your boat, really aggressive water on the left side going left shore down, and I can have mag lips out, and they're both working equally as well, even though the water can be a varying of a couple miles per hour in difference. Before we go, let's talk a little bit about boat position and how we actually pull plugs. Pulling plugs out in front of your drift boat, for example, is an extension of your drift boat, okay? You're gonna put those rods in the rod holders. Don't allow folks to hold on to them because we don't set the hook on plug fishing. We allow the fish to take it down, bury the rod tip towards the water for a couple good tugs before we ever take the rod out of the rod holder. That fish is pinned with good hooks. It's not going anywhere, so there's no need to set the hook. We deploy those uh, plugs out in front of the boat, 35, 40 feet, depending on water clarity, 45 feet. Um, put them in the rod holder, let the plugs dive down, do their thing. If I have my wall set up out in front of the boat and I'm backing it down a long stretch and the river kind of takes a turn, it's up to me to navigate those plugs into where I need them to go. I simply do that on how I'm rowing, okay? Now, if you haven't rowed a drift boat a lot and you're putting plugs out there, there's nothing wrong with starting out on anchor. Drop the pick, put the plugs out, watch how the rod tips uh, react. Get to understand the cadence on the rod tips. You'll know if you get leaves or debris or something on there once you understand the exact cadence that those plugs are putting out because one of them will change. So you need to reel that in, check, clear the debris off, put it back out. Uh, as you become familiar with how those plugs react, uh, plugs react, go ahead, pull your anchor, slowly start rowing backwards. Now, if you're in soft water, the, the biggest problem or mistake early uh, on that you'll make as one who's trying to pull plugs is that you will over row and actually back your boat up river. So now the plugs are diving really hard, lots of erratic action on the uh, rod tips, and you think you're doing it right. However, if you look at your shoreline, pick a landmark, tree stump, rock, something, identify where that is, and as you're rowing, if you're either sitting there at that same mark for the last five minutes, you're not backing your plugs downriver. If you look downriver and that rock is somewhere down below you, you've actually backed your uh, plugs back upriver. So you need to pick your landmark, back row on your boat to slowly allow it to go downriver, and keep it into a certain pace that's just kind of constantly moving the boat on down, which is, in effect, moving the plugs on down, okay? As you move the plugs down, you have water that you want to cover, okay? Backing the plugs down straight back and forth is covering a percentage of water. By ferry angle the back of your boat back and forth, if I take the back of my boat to the left, it's going to swing my plugs over to the right, and then I can bring the boat over here and catch up with them, and then I can bring the boat to the right, swing the plugs over to the left, and I can then let the boat drift over. I can cover water by moving the back of my boat and swinging the front of the boat. Again, the plugs are an extension of your drift boat, so however you're guiding those, and you get into a corner and you have a bunch of structure, 
and you want to back those plugs into that corner and kind of take it out of 45 around the corner. You as the oarsman, it's up to you on how you present those plugs into a corner and, and maneuver them down river. And it only, you know, with time and practice, you're going to be able to do that. Just look for certain things as you develop your skills. Don't over row, pick your landmarks, don't back your boat up river, uh, sit on anchor if you need to for a while to understand how plugs work and uh, get, get in uh, sync with the action of your uh, rod tips. All those finer points as you develop your skills, fish and plugs is going to work fantastic. And don't be afraid to put scent on them, okay? Some good uh, mics, uh, UV scent, anise krill, krill, shrimp, sand shrimp, all the shrimp lines that you can get. Put those right on the base of your plug and uh, give it a little scent so that you have some on river to uh, entice them. Yeah, steelhead predominantly uh, react based on color contrast and they're a reactionary bite, but don't be afraid to use scent because it will aid you in finding success when pulling plugs. So hopefully that covered enough for you. Uh, you know, kind of the, the A to Z uh, on plug fishing, whether you've been doing it for a while or just starting out. Um, you got any questions, hit us up on Facebook and we can certainly answer those, whether it's talking again specifics about rods, reels, line weight, size of line, uh, size of rod, all that. And again, some differences on these plugs that we have uh, out here tonight to kind of give you a perspective on uh, what you can and can't do with plugs. I think if you get out and give it a try through the rest of this season, once water drops, you're going to be very successful.